Hi and welcome, I'm Lisa. Thanks so much for taking the time to join me on my website or YouTube channel for another card video. Today I have a quick video sharing this Let It Snow card featuring Whimsy Stamp Snow Flurry Stamp Set along with a few WOW embossing powders. Of course all the products will be linked below for you and you can find them over on my website as well. So here's a quick look at that Snow Flurry stamp set. I love how different the snowflakes are in this set and how you can build different sentiments with this set. Now to get started, I lay a piece of craft cardstock into my Misty. I arrange the snowflakes and lift them with the lid. I'm covering that cardstock with anti-static powder. I want to stamp these images using embossing ink. And when I'm using embossing ink, I like to stamp the images two to three times just to make sure that I have a fully stamped image. You're going to notice here that it's hard to see the details the first time I stamp the images uh, using that embossing ink. So just as a fail safe, I stamp them at least twice. You'll also notice I'm not pushing down on the lid of the Misty. I'm simply running my hand over the lid, applying a light pressure. Remember, when you apply too much pressure, your stamps will cause your ink to mushroom, resulting in a blurred image. You know when you get those really thick lines? That's usually caused from too much pressure. Uh, you also lose all the fine details in the image when that happens. So I've been wanting to try this new-to-me White Puff Twinkle Embossing Powder from WOW. They say it's just like the White Twinkle Embossing Powder, but with more puff, and that it's great for marshmallows, clouds, or snowy scenes. I'm going to pour this over the images, and right away I can see the twinkle. It's so pretty. I'm going to give that a light tap to start removing some of the excess, and you don't want to tap too much or too hard. It can knock the powder loose from the images. Now I go in with a brush to clean up around the snowflakes and once I'm happy with the cleanup, I'm going in with a preheated heat gun to set that powder. I'm going to keep that gun moving to avoid burning the powder and the paper and I know it's done when it turns shiny and dimensional. So I'm going back to the Misty with the cardstock. I'm going to stamp these snowflakes again, but first I'm rearranging the snowflakes. I added that anti-static powder. I'm lifting those stamps with the lid again. And this time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to use a colored ink. I'm using Versifying Claire Glamorous Pigment Ink. Now, when I first stamp this onto those snowflakes, you're going to think it's pink, but when it actually is applied to this paper, it's red. I'm using a colored pigment ink because the embossing powder is transparent, and I like to stamp with color when using a transparent glitter powder. I think it makes it pop off the paper so much better, and if I were to use the embossing ink, you would see that craft color through the transparent glitter. Um, embossing powder. So I like to use the colored ink. Now the Versifying Claire ink is an amazing ink. It's perfect uh, for stamps with intricate details. If you've never tried it, I do recommend it. So I'm covering the snowflakes with the Red Glitz embossing glitter. Every time I see this, I think Red Ruby slippers. It's just so pretty. Again, a light tap, clean off the excess and with clean off that excess with a brush and heat set it. Okay, so now I want to go back in and I want to fill in all that empty space you see there, but I want to fill it in so that it doesn't take away from what I've already um, embossed. So I'm just going to use my embossing ink and stamp those images again. And this gives a nice monochromatic look that's not overpowering. I went ahead and I ran this through my big kit just to save some time and I used Hero Arts Rectangle Nesting Die. I want to go back in to finish filling in those empty spaces by stamping along the edges using only that embossing ink again. And when you're stamping a background or you're creating your own pattern paper, always try to run your stamped images off the edge. It gives it a much more finished look. Um, I have everything right here. I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment, let it snow, using Versafine Onyx Black ink, and I'm using 80 Pound Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. Now, before I start to assemble my card, I want to show you a little trick. 
If you'll grab your mini scoreboard or your scoreboard, whatever you have, go along the edges of the cardstock using an embossing tool. Now you'll notice I'm starting with the stamped side up. That's so I can see where I want to lay my score marks because I'm only scoring in the areas that I did not stamp. So once I have all the areas marked that I'm stamp that I'm scoring along the edge, sorry about that, I'm going to flip it over and then score those marks again. And then that's just going to reverse that score mark. And when you flip it over, you'll be able to see those score marks. I love this. This gives us a really nice finishing touch. It's great for simple cards. So the craft card stock I used is an inexpensive one. And um, I had a bit of warping while I was heat setting those embossing powders, but I found by using mounting foam to attach the panel to the card base, it helps flatten everything out again. So I'm adding my mounting foam, not just for dimension, but to help correct that warping issue. Once I have it mounted, um, or adhere to the panel, I'm going to remove the backing and center it on my card base that measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Now I trim the sentiments using my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer and I'm adding mounting foam to the back of those. Now I do trim the top sentiment down a bit more and I just use my scissors to snip that off. So once I have the sentiments on the card, I'm going to finish it off with a few clear glitter enamel dots from Honey Bee Stamps. These enamel dots are so clear with just a touch of glitter, they'll be perfect to finish off this card. And here we have our red, white, and craft Let It Snow card. So I do believe that's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed joining me and that you were inspired enough to head into your crafty space and create something amazing today. I do hope you'll hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of new content to my channel. And if you could hit that like button, that would be awesome. I want to encourage you to leave any comments or suggestions below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the website where you can find videos and blog posts in one spot. As always, know how much I appreciate you taking your time to watch this video. And until next time, my crafty friends, keep crafting.